Michiri forbade us to go to the market because she was so scared about the nitrogen that the U.S. Armed Forces left during World War II, which were turned into pesticides. And that's a common knowledge. So we were allowed to go to the supermarket on December 26th each year, only once a year. And we could buy ice cream, we could buy junk food and all that. And yeah, all our juices were were just made from the house. And we were also never given money to buy toys, or nor were we given anything. We had to make our toys. We were 10 children in the family. So by sheer economics alone, you can see how our family lived. And Towards college, I understood quite so much about the earth that um, I went into the, in the studies of integration of the natural and the built environment. So our practice in architecture, which is mostly in hospitality architecture, um, we have a niche market in that we design our houses, I mean our resorts, from the land. Whatever the land produces, the trees, the leaves, the land, everything. So with the community working on it instead of getting contractors. So, and we found that in most of our projects, bamboo is always there. So hence, um, we specialize on bamboo. So this is our, this is quite clear, so. We're mainly focusing on crafts for now. So as many of you Filipinos know, and for those who don't know, um, the first man and woman in Filipino folklore legend came from bamboo when the uh, bird was pecking on it and did it split, and then came the first man and woman. So bamboo is really close to our hearts also as far as, as history and mythology are concerned. Um, the, there are many, many beneficial uses of bamboo. In its living form, in its natural form, in its harvested form, and in its processed form. As you know that we, um, in its natural form, meaning in its living form, it is a very good cooling agent. It is an air quality enhancement um, material because it sequesters 35% more carbon in the air than any other flora in the world. And it also gives off 35% more oxygen than any other flora in the world. If you notice when you go next to a bamboo, it's always cool. And if you're sick, you just go under a bamboo and they say you'll get well because you're breathing more uh, quality oxygen than the ones that they give you in the hospital in the ER, you know? We had a project before that where um, we were designing a high-end subdivision and there was a problem because there was a chicken industry, poultry, right beside it. And when the wind blows, it's very odorous. And the noise of the chickens also, right? So we placed five layers of bamboo and the noise was gone and the air was also better. It's a very good air filter. Sewage so treatment, we use this in all of our projects. Um, as you know, septic tanks have three tanks. The fourth tank is the sewage treatment plant which is bamboo. And soil erosion, it's very, very good for hills, and many of our mountains in Cebu are with bamboo. In its harvested form of construction, you've seen this all around. Crafts, this is what we're going to be talking about now. Food, number three in the world for bamboo. It's the third largest export material for bamboo. It's bamboo shoots. Um, fermented drinks, we have beer and wine. And has any of you had some bamboo beer already? Oh. And why do I teach you to make? <laughs> and then art, carving, sculpture, uh, play equipment, there's a lot of this. Um, in its processed form, we now have materials. You know your Nikes, Airisms, and Uniqlo? Those thin ones, those are all bamboo fiber. They're very, very cool. Wood products, veneers, plants, and powder, which I'm sure a lot of Asians have in Sam's basement cup, so let's go. So from the INVAR, which is the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization, this is where you will find a lot of information about bamboo, and you can Google this. Bamboo is an average 60 billion a year industry as of 2018, but as of 2019, it reached 68, no? So there are 10,000 documented uses of bamboo. There's 1,642 species of bamboo worldwide, and we're proud to say 21 of these are endemic in the Philippines. It takes only three to six years the time it takes for bamboo to be harvestable, meaning to gain its strength. For a hardwood nara tree or a loan tree that takes 35 years to gain its strength, it only takes three to four years for a bamboo to gain that strength. Here, here it sequesters 21.10 tons of carbon dioxide per pole, okay? And it's never released even after harvest. So if most of the plants in the world 
you cannot put inside your bedroom. Most of the plants in the world you cannot put into your bedroom. Why? Because most plants give up oxygen in the morning but give off carbon dioxide in the evening, which is bad for us, but not bamboo. It's safe to put inside your bedroom. That's how special it is. It purifies air because it gives off a lot of oxygen. It is organic. You don't have to put any fertilizer in it. It has its own antibacterial agents, which we call, actually, I didn't write it there, it's called bamboo kun, K-U-N. That is the natural antibiotic of bamboo. It's renewable. You go out in the morning for work, take a picture of your bamboo, when you come back, it's one meter taller. It grows so fast. Until it reaches its height of maybe 30 to 50 meters, it stops growing, and the leaves just get bigger. The cone does not get any bigger, though. That's it. It just gains its strength. The fibers gain strength. So if you see here, all these hardwoods, no? To, re um, to reach its strength is 60 years, 15 years, 8 years, 1 year, here's 2 years. No? It gains that much strength. It's very superior in strength. Same here. Uh, the strength is reached in about 2 or 3 years and it just levels off. It grows very, very fast. And if you look at um, carbon sequestration of a mosso bamboo, mosso bamboo grows a lot in Korea, in China, and in Japan. This is a running bamboo. No? And the blue gun, look at it. There's just so much. So bamboo is really very, very good to plant also. And in, um, in terms of carbon sequestration and oxygen generation, and water retention, you know, all bamboos are like rainwater tanks. You plant a lot of bamboo and it rains, it just sucks up all the water inside. And during summer, when there's no more rain, it, the, the soil pressure becomes lessened, no? Because it's dry. And the water just goes down those tubes and it just waters everything around them. So in agriculture, this is also very important. And in fact, for survival methods, if you just look for water, you just cut the bamboo and drink the water. It's all inside. Bamboo is not wood. Bamboo is a grass. So because it's a grass, it's a reed. And because it's a reed, it is made of tubes. Imagine the straw that you drink water from. There's thousands of those all packed together. And which is why all the liquid just goes inside. And the reason why it stays there is because while the soil is wet, the, 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 the soil pressure is, is strong, so it just stays there. So when it's dry, it loosens, and the water just slows down. So it's a very good um, water retention facility, I would even call it, no? So the major players of the bamboo industry in the world is North America, Europe, Asia Pacific, Latin America, and Middle East. This is among the exporters and the importers. China, of course, is the number one, and India is number two. Philippines is number five. No? Um, so. China is the world's largest bamboo producer. 7.5 million are employed in the China's in China's bamboo sector. They have a production of 19.5 billion in 2012, which was a 50% increase the year before. In India, it's also the same. So you can see that, I guess if I look at all of you, most of you are from Asia, some of you are from Europe, but you are all familiar with bamboo, and everywhere you go, there's bamboo. You know, bamboo grows everywhere, even in snow areas, even in London. Even There's always a species for every ecosystem. So bamboo has always been used by, and uh, the people, uh, has always been used in areas where they grow. Now, a lot of people like building with bamboo, but then they say it's expensive. Now, what makes it expensive is because it's not available in your locality. Bamboo, I would say, is a growing industry. Because in any hardware that you go to in the Philippines, you can buy hardwood, lawaan, whatever, you know, the white woods. But no one is selling treated bamboo in the hardware. So far, only last week, there's finally one hardware in Dumaguete, Uy Matiao Hardware, that is now selling treated bamboo. And I really give them a big clap for that. Through our six years of of having these workshops every quarter, we have now produced three people who have who are now producing treated bamboo 
in Romblon, in Bantayan Island, and in Negros. These were our students in the past six years. Now, there will be more of that, and I'm hoping that it won't be as expensive, no? Because treatment is very cheap, no? So, um, when it comes to, let's go back to this, um, whatever is traded with bamboo, the big, if you see bamboo shoot, is big, huh? no? This is bamboo shoot. Furniture is this light colored one, industrial product in that. And who can guess what is the highest industrial product of bamboo that's being sold? Can anybody make a guess? Sorry? No. No, it's pellets. They pelletize bamboo for electricity, for powering the plant. It has a very, very high caloric, I mean, very high heat. Yeah? And it's very fast growing. It's better than using wood chips. Bamboo grows everywhere. And so it is now a major use for generating electricity in the power plants. And I think I like that idea rather than coal. Don't you? Diba? So some of my friends in Brazil are turning 50, you know, more than 50, I mean 500 hectares. So many hectares in Brazil. Number one in producer of these pellets is actually Brazil. You just sit and wait for the bamboo to grow and then you pelletize them. For those in the Philippines, I would suggest that you go to the Philippine fiber organization, something. Yeah, because they have pelletizers and there are no takers. So you might as well write them, okay? So in the Philippines, it's the, the fifth largest bamboo exporter in the world. Oh, I can imagine. The, um, the other three are China, EU, and Indonesia. So up to 52,000 hectares of land in the country is planted to bamboo, but this could not meet the market demand. And I feel it also. Just as a local architect, I always have a need for the supply of bamboo. There's very little. So I urge you to plant, just plant. And I will tell you later on what are the varieties to plant, in case you want to go into that business. The bamboo-based furniture industry has a growth rate of 15%, while the bamboo-based handicraft industry has 7%. The most widely bam used bamboo species here are the buko, the kumampao, what we call the bagatai. Um, the kawayan tinik, the bamboo sublumenea, and the anos. So if you look at this, with a, a comparison between the bamboo and the wood, this is the most stark difference. Reaches its full strength in three to five years, 10 to 20, 20 to 25. So economically, it's a no-brainer. You'd rather go into bamboo, right? Okay. The difference between wood and bamboo, again, if you look at the fibers of bamboo, they are broken. They're broken um, um, fibers. Well, here, if you look, they're all straight. They're all tubes. This is microscopic image. So that proves to you. This is why it's very strong. Because the broken fibers, you have to have a lot, and it gains so much years to gain that strength to make it thick. But since, but since bamboo is made of equally, you know, those tubes are so much the same and all that, so it can gain its strength in a very short time. So bamboo fibers have a tensile strength of up to 3,200 kilograms per centimeter, surpassing that of timber and mild steel. Just a little bit of a hint, how to deal with bamboo. If you look at the tree in the law of nature, I mean in the natural scene, a tree is like this, right? But it has branches, like that. So when you build a house of timber, what do you do? It's posted. That is nature inspired. A bamboo grows this way in clumps. So it is also the same when you use it. Never try to do this with bamboo. You will end up with a very expensive structure because you have to treat it like wood. Treat it like bamboo. Treat it, the, use it the way it grows. See, you only have four foundations and you have all of these the way bamboo grows and that makes your building very efficient. You get it now? Nature is very good at teaching us lessons. Okay, so some significant bamboo species, I will only name here a few. The Quadwa. This is also native to us. They, they say it's native to us. This is the iron bamboo. It's very, very straight, very even walls. Um, so this is the Quadwa bamboo. 
Um, they are mostly used for almost everything. It's very, 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 very strong. <laughs> no? Okay, so these are the uses. Bridges. Bridges, they're very strong for bridges. And these are just examples of very nice, beautiful bridges. And this is how we install them. We put a steel rod, and we put a little bit of cement in the base, and that's, and it won't move anymore. This is in California, in LA. I was so surprised to see it there. So this is another use of the, um, uh, the bamboo. Beautiful, beautiful um, art. No? Art installation in Brasilia. Now with guagua, you can also do this. This guy from Colombia, as soon as the bamboo shoots were growing, he pulled them with strings and tires and everything. So he was able to make, her, he, was, he, was, yeah, he was able to manipulate because it's grass, right? And you can manipulate it. I think it's really cool. <clears throat> so now we have the anos, another widely used one. Uh, the golden bagakai. This is used for sawali making where our walls, you know, the, the woven walls, they are very much used for that. So here, um, you know this bamboo knife? I remember that long ago my grandmother would have that to cut the umbilical cord. So first this, and this is not a very good example compared to Kenneth Gobon Pues car, but you know, um, based on our Philippine jeepney. Someone in the south just made it instead of using steel. Because we have this public transportation we call the jeepney here in the city. One time I was giving a talk in Antique on bamboo. Um, and let me tell you this story because I think it's very profound. We were there to teach them about bamboo. But we were the ones who right. When we were there, because it was such a far village up in the mountains where there were no roads, but they had so much bamboo. Because of their sheer survival or sheer poverty or no access to anything, they had bamboo knives, fork, phone, cup, plate, everything. And we were the ones who said, oh, this is so beautiful. The knives, most especially. So we ended up ordering from them. And they taught us their ways. So you will never know, you know? So bamboo is also very good, really, for knives. So the bamboo sa Lumeana, this is the matinik, and this is number one in the Philippines, actually. This is the one with thorns in the bottom. This is structural bamboo. You can use them for structures. They have very little holes inside, very thick ones. So look at this. I love this umbrella. Um, you can put um, a fiber there. And these are two pictures of uh, my workshops before, where I would teach them how to make bamboo rope. No? And even this, when they make this, they would have five of that and five, and they would weave five each, so 15. And they would weave it in a bigger row. That's what they would do. Um, and of course, this. Very common anywhere you go in the Philippines or even in Asia, right? We always have the bamboo. We call this the nig. They're also good. The tips are very good for handles. And this is what I meant. The more of these braids you use and you just keep on twisting them, they get bigger, and it's also very good for making paper. Although it takes a long time to make this. Naturally, you would need two years. All these shavings of the Blue Diana, you will put in lime water, and they, for two years after, you will take them all out and pound them into paper. It is actually what's used also in some money. Like in Myanmar, they do put this there. I learned this process there. We have the port of the Philippine instruments. We have the gaba, the kind of um, xylophone. And I don't know if you're familiar with the loud bastard. This is my son, Ko. Yes. Yeah. So, he, I guess family's into bamboo. Right? So, um, now we have bagakai. This is the one that's, a lot of architects love this because it is so light. It's what we use in fences and all. It's endemic to the Philippines. So they have very beautiful uses. One of my favorites is using it as living architecture. You know, you can use this, look at the, from there to there to there to there, and you just put these boards here, and you can create a very, very good creative space, whether it's for dance, for painting, for anything, for parks. And this is how the bagakai looks. Look, it has very thin walls. It's good for artwork, our 
fences. My gate is actually made of this in my house. And we can have pole installations. There's just so much. It's very light. It's very light. No? Yeah, you say it louder. You say it louder. It, that's good to know. Uh, in our gal, we put bagata, sharpened bagata in our houses because it, yeah, it's words of monsters that prey on pregnant women and also like <laughs> yeah, as well. We have the bolo or butong, patong. This is what we used to make our bangkas. Are you really familiar with the little outrigger boats we have? Yeah, yeah this is the one that we use. Okay, they're very, very tall. Look, look at this, huh? They're quite big. You know, the strength of a bamboo, the strongest portion is the base, which is why when you cut bamboo, you should always cut from the very bottom so that the strength is delivered equitably towards the end. Do not cut in the middle and then use that and use this differently as what many people do. Don't do that, you're cutting the strength. Remember, there's only one tube that's connected. I mean many of them, but it's only one tube. And the strength runs along that tube. Number two, never peel bamboo. And, and so many people peeling bamboo, that is its natural waterproofing. And then you're peeling it and then the insects come. Okay, so don't do that, huh? So this, um, in the Philippines, this variety has been used to um, create bamboo flooring. This is from Mindanao. It looks still very crude, but they heat press this. And look at this, I love this, where you can create different forms for your bamboo. I love this because the branch is still connected and then you just, this you can get. These forms you can get from the matini, the blum, no, the blumiana. Because when you see those thorns, they, they really are shaped like that. So maybe if you take out one carefully and you don't do anything with it, then you get this one. This is natural. This is the way it grows. It's beautiful, right? Diva. And in Panay, in Eastern Visayas, we have a salt making industry that uses this, which is why we call it the yellow salt. No? They use this, um, uh, they don't have much land for salt beds, so they use the bamboo instead. And because it's bamboo, they, it turns yellow, but it's okay, no? Then we have the black bamboo, an architect's dream or artist's dream. Black bamboo is quite expensive. I went to Nordstrom in LA, it was $90 a pole of two meters only. Because black bamboo retains its color even after. That's why it's highly prized. So this is a, this, this black bamboo was used as a gutter in the Penang Hill. I don't know if you've been there. I took this from the Penang Hill in uh, the habitat in Penang Hill, one of the tents there. And here's a bathroom. Here's a, a lamp. And this is a picture of a room that I took off in Bali. Black bamboo, very nice, no? And here's some more black bamboo. Naturally black. We have a lot in the Philippines, yes. Black bamboo, for those who are planting black bamboo, don't be frustrated. It doesn't become black only until after seven years. When you start planting, it starts getting purple, and it starts getting dark gray, and then you want that black ebony one, right? Now, here's a hint. Black bamboo will never become black if you're low got to be 1,200 meters above sea level, then you will get the ebony block, but only after about six to seven years. So just be patient. As with everything, all things will come. No? no they are highly priced. And they take their So here's other uses of bamboo. Um, it's a very good scaffolding. Like this is in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, they were using this as scaffolding, and it can be an inspiration for art installations. This is in Ilocos, northern Philippines. And you can make great installations. For as long as you don't peel your bamboo, please don't peel them. You can take them outdoors. Okay? And you know, I find that whenever I visit bamboo shops, they always try to take the spoke out and make it smooth. You know, that, that's doing your bamboo a disadvantage because the, the combs, the, I mean, the, the nodes, they're very, they're very waterproof for one, and they keep the pests from coming in. 
because that's exactly what they want. The pests are after the ones in the nodes, the carbohydrates in the nodes. So don't take them out. Bamboo has those nodes. Let it be. It's beautiful. Find beauty in it. Don't take it out. Creativity. I took this picture from, uh, we were in the 2000, I mean last year, I mean, there was a bamboo, not last year, the other year, in New Mexico, the World Bamboo Congress, and this was the entry of Japan. You know, this basket, for me, is a big inspiration for building bigger things. If you want to build a dome, just, it's like an inverted basket. And these are pictures of Bali. This was my classroom, this three, one, two, three. I mean, not that one, but these two. And this is a church by Simon Velez. But look at the way they just stripped it, no? And you can use, you can use it in so many ways. As strips, as poles, whatever. And these are the bamboo splitting machines. We have the mechanized ones, and we also have the manual one. And these are all very, very easily available, no? Now, this is um, strip split bamboo, again. And I love this by Hong Kazu. In this interior space by Teshigahara, it's so beautiful. So you can take all forms, but then don't try to straighten bamboo. Okay, if it's like that, use it like that. That's the most efficient way. Don't try to alter nature. It will give you the most benefits when you try to use something natural. And this is something that I like. This is actually um, the Kincha method of Peru. If you want to learn about bamboo carving, you go to Ifgao. They hold this. And it's really, really nice. They use the giant bamboo here, no? The other significant uses of bamboo, we have bare wine, sheets, and the, uh, for paper and for charcoal. There's more. So this was a picture again in, in, you know, in Mexico. This person, I met him in 2015. He has in Korea, he's been making bamboo beer. It's craft beer, and he has four kinds. Lauka, he ferments the leaves. And there's this Filipino who lives in Canada who also makes this out of the same leaves. But I also like the bamboo wine. No? This I took in Korea. However, these ones are from um, Cambodia. What they do is, as soon as the bamboo shoot comes out, they inject a white spirit. So what are the white spirits? I don't know. I don't drink. I only know gin. Okay, you put one cup in and inject it into the shoot, the bamboo shoot. Let it stay there, and after two years, it will just process itself. And this is why the bamboo wine is sold this way, because they cut the, they cut the nodes and the wine is inside. Charcoal. I take carbonized, carbonized, I mean activated bamboo charcoal once a week. My doctor is Eastern. So the uses of bamboo charcoal, it deodorizes your refrigerator, freezer, bedroom, everywhere in the house, your gym bags, anywhere where you're prone to have molds, you know, your pets so the smell don't get, uh, don't anymore smell, compost areas, it's used for decoration, it filters the air to absorb toxic chemical substances for commercial and industrial applications. It also filters the white spirits, by the way, so this is why I have this this picture, and this activated um, charcoal, and I'm sure many ladies here use the black one for the pores, no? It makes the pores smaller. Oh, oh, there you go, for finer pores, ladies. So this is um, a chandelier that I took at the Bamboo Congress. When you enter the Bamboo Congress, it was this beautiful char charcoal chandelier. It was very nice. And this is a project of mine. This project is very close to my heart. It's mo we made a lot of bamboo in it, but more importantly, because it was the community who made this. We did not depend on a contractor. We did resource mapping on five of the villages around it. So uh, this is our bamboo roofing. And there was a lot of limestone also in the property, which we just used. This was all from the property. And the bamboo went with it. And if you see this, this is our bamboo showers. Because we have problems in Cebu, our, pro our water has a lot of uh, uh, white, white, white cashew, hard, right? Hard and then we are using showers, which we buy from the hardware, with very little holes, and these are not made in the Philippines. These are made elsewhere. So we said, let's just use this. It's, it's a bamboo, we wedge the bamboo, and then it just comes out, the water comes out, and no more problems. You know? And these ones were made by the women. 
most of the women in the villages made our lighting fixtures because they could just make it at home without leaving their homes because they have babies to watch and every 5.30 you would have a multi-cab pick it up. So we didn't really have to buy anything much from the hardware. And these were our ceiling vents, no? We had the, 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 the high school boys carved this on Saturdays. Um, and this one was, this one was actually just made by my gardener. But these are very simple things to make. And the woman, the women make this. And we had bamboo beds and this is everything inside the spa in Plantation Bay. Now let's go to bamboo paper. You can also use it by using the bamboo sheath. The sheath is the thing that comes out of the notes. So don't throw that away. They're very good for making paper, and this is the formula. Anyway, you don't have to write this down. You'll be given copies. And this is how to make the paper. You soak that. And of course, you have the sieve, and then you have the paper. This is what's being used here in Melita. No? So if you have a hot presser, you can do this just straight from the bamboo sheath. Very easy. You can now have a whole set. In Japan, I like this because they make it into slippers. I even have one of these I got in Yokohama. This is one very nice picture that I took in 2015. This is called the cocoon in South Korea. And these were all covered with sheath. The sheath was pressed into roofing. And the sheath is very shiny and it is naturally waterproof. You don't need to do anything. No? So this is a very nice installation. Now, this is coming to the end of my talk. I'll give you a short idea of what of this um, uh, about bamboo before you use it. Identify the species of bamboo. Now, if you don't know if this bamboo is three years, because you have to harvest it only after three years, right? You will know because the new ones usually have white nodes. The senior citizens, you can hardly see them. <laughs> right? So you don't want that. You want this where you can still see the gray nodes. And the white blotches are good. They, they meet. These white blotches only means that you have very good oxygen. Yeah, they're lichen. They're okay. So that's how to choose. Now, harvesting them. You cannot harvest them in the full moon because gravity is high, which means that the amount of carbohydrates which the bamboo is eating every day goes up. And it is the carbohydrates that the pests like. So you don't want that. So you want them on a waning moon when the moon's going down, and then gravity is also less. The other one is, and it is, you can never, never cut bamboo in the daytime. Never. Why? Because the bamboo is eating. When the sun comes in, photosynthesis happens. And when photosynthesis happens, it all goes up into the tube, the carbohydrates, which the best is like. So when the sun goes down at five, let it go down, let it go down. So maybe about one o'clock in the morning, that's the best time to cut. So in the morning, in the morning, you put the yellow ribbon in what bamboo you want to cut, prepare the area, clear, put your truck there, prepare it, come back at night, cut it, leave it there, go back to sleep. Then you will not have problems with pests. Same thing with high tide and low tide for those bamboo growing in by the sea. Never cut in high tide, always cut in low tide. Remember, remember, remember that, okay? Always bore a hole in your bamboo so that all the nutrients will go inside. Always bore a hole here. This is a picture of my one of my men putting a hole. And for those that want to do it under the sea, it's very tricky because you have to, you have to put the bamboo according to where the current is. It's better in the river because you know where the current is. And it's not to be floated. It's under the sea, so you have to put something heavy. Okay? Now this is what we used in Plantation Bay when we did the bamboo. We just had a mixture of natural soap, chili peppers, garlic, and, bor and boric acid. Borax and boric acid is for um, fire retardation. <coughs> Soak it for about two hours, two, three hours, and then cook it. Let the bamboo stay immersed for three days, then air dry. Very simple. I try not to use man-made chemicals. Borax is from boron, right? It's what is used in your eye drops. It's pretty safe. And this is how to store bamboo. Remember this, when you store bamboo like this, always put your openings in the northeast and southwest directions. Why? Because air only travels, wind only travels in these two directions. That's the natural trade winds. Or oriented towards the northeast and the southwest. 
then you will always have air flowing into your family, which is very important. Okay? So, the world of bamboo is very, very big. I want to thank you for listening to this talk, and I hope that it will give you an idea of what you can now research into. The world of bamboo is very, very creative.